the first step is you have to access the Photopea program. Go on to any browser. I'm going to use Google Chrome today. And what you're going to do is type in photopia.com. Hit enter. And Photopea is a photo manipulating program, but it's completely web based. So you can access it really from any device with no problems at all. It's completely free. At this point, you should already have an image that you'd like to work with. Um, if you have an image on your phone, use the OneDrive app on your phone and put the image into your OneDrive app. Once you've shared it to your OneDrive, access it from your one-to-one -one device or any computer and go to File, Open. You should be able to access the image from your OneDrive. Okay, go to your OneDrive and find the image. So this is the photo I'm using for color selection. Right now it's able to be open through GIMP, but it can really be any JPEG image. Click on the image you want to use and hit open. That image should pop up. Before we do any type of editing, we wanna resize the image so that it fits on whatever we are printing it on, whether you're printing it on paper, we wanna make sure it's smaller than the average paper size, which is eight and a half by 11. If you are adhering this to a piece of wood, you also want to measure the wood you're working with. For example, if I'm working on wood that is five inches wide by seven inches tall, I wanna make sure this image is very, very similar in size. So I'm going to go to image. I'm going to go down to image size and find out how big or small this image is. You really want to work with inches. So I'm going to click on the um, dimensions over here and click inches so I know how I can work with this image. Right now it's 14 by 20 inches, which is a lot bigger than the wood. And it's also bigger than a standard sheet of paper. My wood is about five inches wide and seven inches tall. So I'm gonna hit five and automatically it resizes my height. I think five by 6.8 is a pretty reasonable dimension to work with since my wood is five by seven. And I want you to change your DPI to 300 just so we're working with a little bit of a higher resolution. Hit OK, and your image will resize. OK, so here's my image. It doesn't look different at all, but when it prints, it'll, look, it'll actually be a totally different size. The next step is I want to name the first layer that I have, which is the original. I'm just going to double click on my layer over to the right and call it original. Hit enter. And with color selection, the appearance is part of it's in color and part of it's in black and white. But essentially, that's just two layers. So the first layer is the original, and the second layer is going to be black and white. In order to add a second layer, we are going to two finger click or right click, and you are going to duplicate this layer. It's going to put a copy layer up top. Let's rename this layer black and white layer. Hit edit. And we are going to turn this top layer black and white. Go over to image, adjustments, and this will adjust the appearance of the colors and the values, all of these different options over here. You can turn it black and white by simply hitting black and white. Another option is clicking on hue and saturation. I'm going to move this over to the right so you can see what happens to the image. And you're going to toggle this button and pull it to the left until it goes to negative 100. As you can see, all of the saturation has been pulled out of my photo. Hit OK. And now the top and white layer has absolutely no color. Instead of just using the eraser tool and erasing the parts that I don't want to be black and white, I'm going to do a layer mask. A layer mask allows me to go back and forth 
and delete and add areas that I want color. If you use the eraser tool, it's very difficult to make any changes because those changes are permanent. So we're not gonna use the eraser tool. We are going to add a layer mask. So make sure your black and white layer is active. Click on that layer and go down to this little box with a black circle in the center where it says add raster mask. And in Photopea, they call it a raster mask. Click on that and you're gonna see that a white box appears to the right of your layer. When the layer is white, that means all of that layer is revealed. When there is black, that means you're concealing the layer. So instead of using the eraser tool, we're gonna to use a paintbrush. You're going to make sure the top color, the top color swatch is white, okay? If right now, if your color is not white, you can pull all the way to the top left until your hex code reads six Fs. You can also type it in, F, 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 six Fs. Hit OK. And the bottom layer, the bottom swatch, I'm sorry, the bottom swatch should be six zeros, which is the code for black. Okay, so we're gonna use our paintbrush and we are going to paint over the areas that we want the black and white layer to be removed from. And remember, it's just concealing. We can always bring it back. My brush tool right now is very small. I'm gonna go to the top where it says 15 and I'm going to make the size much larger. This brush is very large and with black, you're going to notice that black conceals the layer. You can quickly go over everything with a large brush. You can also notice those changes are being made in the layer mask. The black areas is concealing the layer. You are going to work and make as much areas in color as you like, or as little areas of color that you like. When you are finished with all the areas of color, you're going to want to zoom in and refine the edges just to make the image a little bit higher quality and craftsmanship. You don't want it to have a very messy edge. So for the most part, I've done a pretty good job with the large brush. Now I'm going to click on my zoom tool and I'm gonna start zooming in on the edges of my image. And you could see that I've done a pretty poor job on the edges because my brush was very large. So I'm gonna click on my brush tool. Okay, oops, click on my brush tool. It's at 197, which is quite large. Let's make it smaller. You can also edit the hardness, which is actually the edge. It can make more of a blurred, soft edge if you bring the hardness down. Or you can keep it at 100%. Just has a very hard edge. Now I'm gonna go in, and instead of using black, because remember, black is concealing, I'm going to hit the arrow button right here, swap colors, and it's going to bring white, which will reveal the black and white layer. So it's really nice to work with the layer mask because you can move back and forth and just clean up all of your edges. Nothing is permanent. So I would work on this, work on your image until the edges are absolutely perfect. You can see that I need to go back already. And I'm gonna also bring down my hardness a lot. I, I want a much more soft edge for this. I'm gonna switch, swap out my colors to black to kind of fix some areas. You see it's a much softer edge now that I've turned my hardness down a lot more. Swap my colors. And you really wanna refine any areas that have color and black and white. Okay, 
Once you're finished with your image, you can further make adjustments to your actual coloring. I'm gonna zoom out. Let's just say we're finished. If I wanna do any edits, maybe make the black and white more dynamic, I'm gonna click directly on my black and white layer. I would click out of this layer mask, so click on the black and white layer, and you can play around with your image adjustments. You can play with your levels, you can play with the curves. You can see how things start to change. I mean, that's a little much, but you can um, play around with the black and white if you'd like. You can always go back in your history if you didn't like those changes. You can also play around with the original color layer. Click on the color layer, go to image adjustments, and you can play with color balance, exposure, vibrance. I'm gonna play with hue and saturation. I'm gonna go a little crazy with this. Let's make the hue like green. You might not want this type of effect on the color part of your image, but the option is there if you want to do that. And again, play around with all of this. This is all located in image adjustments. All these different things will edit the appearance of the color of your image. Once you are finished, you're going to hit File, export it as a JPEG. This will flatten your entire image so none of your layers are, they're all flattened, so you won't be able to edit them. If you save it as a PSD file, you will be able to access it again and continue your edits. I would save it as a PSD just in case. So save as PSD. Okay, what's gonna happen is it's going to save in your downloads. So I would click on that, show in folder and see where it's been saved. So on my computer, it saved it to my downloads and I wanna actually put it in my OneDrive so I can access it from anywhere. So I'm gonna click on the file and I'm going to drag it to my OneDrive. So now it's located right here and I can edit it further. So if you wanna save the file as a JPEG, which is really, accessible and you can open it on any device and if you're ready to print i'm going to show you how to export the image so when you're finished you can file export as jpeg okay it's going to download well before it downloads you want to make sure the uh, quality is at a hundred percent if it's at anything else you want to change it to a hundred Let's put it back to 100 and hit save. It's going to automatically download at the bottom of your screen in your downloads folder if you're using Google Chrome. You're going to show in folder. And you're going to see that it's saved actually more than once. You're going to see that it has saved as a JPEG. Okay, you're going to drag this to your OneDrive folder. And you can see that the PSD file is in here if you need to do additional edits. The flattened version, the JPEG version is available right here. And this is the original version with all of the full color. Okay, and this is the version that you would want to file and print 